Nassos is a singer-songwriter, multi-instrumentalist, educator, music theorist and PhD candidate at Bass Spa, which is where he gained a master's degree in songwriting. Uh, he holds a, an associate diploma in music teaching from the University of West London, and his doctoral research explores the common characteristics of Greek rebetico and African-American blues with the aim of conceiving a, a creative method for generating cross-cultural music and lyrics. Uh, it focuses on the analysis and reception of Rebetico fusions with contemporary Western music. So without wasting any further time, uh, Nassos, over to you. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Nassos Polizoidis, and I'm going to talk about the commonalities between two very special DIY cultures, Rebetico and blues. For, for those of you not familiar with the term rebetico, it is a style of music that originated at the end of the 19th century by marginal people at ports and prisons of Greece. The people who played this kind of music and shared similar beliefs, outfits, and culture are called rebetes. Here are some of them in the port of Pereias, located in the south of Athens. Notice that the majority holds instruments of the lute family. In 1962, Dick Dale made an American surf rock version of the 1927 Rebetico song, Monsieur Lou, and gained worldwide popularity. This was used by Quentin Tarantino in his film Pulp Fiction. It regained popularity in 2006 when sampled by the, by the band Black Eyed Peas in their song Pump It, and Dick Dale's version was included in the video game Guitar Hero 2. Before we move on, I want to make another observation. Rebetico has been described as the blues of Greece. Sometimes it happens for commercial purposes. These are compilation albums where the catchy subtitles along with the touristy pictures serve as an eye-catching advertisement. This can be seen in posters as well where, uh, that are addressed to both Hellenophone and Anglophone audiences. On top of that, the Rebetico Records collector Panos Savopoulos does a personal research on Rebetico and he's been disseminating his observations in different media where he usually emphasizes the similarities of Rebetico with Portuguese fado and especially with the blues. However, if you see photographs of influential musicians of these two traditions, you will once again realize that Rebetes hold bouzoukis of different shapes whereas the bluesmen hold acoustic guitars. In 2007, Daphne Tragaki published her book, Rebetico Words, where she confirms that one of the most commonly applied descriptions of a Rebetico song was that which described the music as the Greek blues. Daniel Coglin states in his 2016 book, it is mainly Piraeus style Rebetico that has been mixed with globalized musical idioms. Blues has been tried by several artists. And then he adds, it is interesting, though hardly surprising, that Rebetico is often mixed with various older and contemporary subcultural or underground styles, such as the blues, come for the albums by Pavlos Sidiropoulos, Georges Pilali, and Stelios Van Vakaris. And then he continues, metaphorical statements like the common Rebetico is the Greek blues or Rebetico is protest music have their musical equivalent in this stylistic fusion. Here you can see the three albums that Kogling identified with Pilali's album in the center. Now these are three additional albums. The one in the center is Pilali's precedent album. On the left of the slide you can see an album of mine that I released under the pseudonym Nasos Concheso. And on the right, there is a single uncannily alike of my side project, Sake Con Queso. Pilali created interesting arrangements by mixing musicians who played instruments that are associated with the blues and the rebetico traditions. You can read in the liner notes of his album, Divine Comedy, that Georges Pilali sings and plays national steel sl slide guitar, 12-string uh, slide guitar, banjolin, which is a, ba a mandolin banjo, Baglamas and Saz. Big Time Sarah sings. Luciana Red sings and plays electric guitar and national steel guitar. Musicians play percussion, Santuri, which is the Greek and Turkish cymbalum, washboard, bass guitar, saxophone, buzuki, acoustic guitar, kanonaki, that is the Greek canon, accordion, tabuna, that are the Greek bagpipes, and the Turkish yali tambur, ney, oud, 
and tambourine, clarinet, and lautokitharo, which is a lute guitar. Georges Villalin is a distinctive figure. Uh, someone may say that he expresses himself by embodying a peculiar persona. He still mixes all his ideas and influences in his shows and believes that every concert is a theatrical play. He dances on chairs, he improvises with Stratocasters, he plays slide on national guitars. He does whatever serves the performance, the moment and the situation. He introduces his songs to the audience by reciting a fantastic story that happened to his character when wandering around in America. One of his innovations is the use of typical blues instruments to play rebetico standards and vice versa. Here you can see him perform a famous rebetico song with fingerstyle and slide techniques on a resonator guitar. This instrument, the thumping and the slide, have never been used in Arabetico music before. Here, you can listen to him, his band and big time Sara performing Sweet Home Chicago with bouzoukis, baglamades, and bazolin and an accordion. Pilali fused the music of the, under, of the underdogs of Greece and America. Now let's move on to the next chapter of this presentation, the similarities between the DIY instruments that were used by rebetes and bluesmen. First things first, both rebetes, as you can see on the left, and bluesmen on the right have used the banjo. On the one hand, an earlier form of the bluesman's ba banjo is the 1860s banjo, whereas Rebetes were previously familiar with a similar Turkish instrument called tsumbus and its variations. On the other hand, both the 1860s banjo and the majority of the instruments of the tsumbus family are fretless. Both cultures created what we now call kanjo. On the left, you can see the efforts of Rebetico enthusiasts, and on the right, there are the efforts of blues enthusiasts. Here, on the left, you can see an oil can baglamas and an oil can buzuki, along with an oil can guitars on the right. Within the last few decades, Greek luthiers and enthusiasts started building cigar box instruments. However, the cigar box instrument that sits on the reddish carpet is the effort of an amateur luthier who tried to make a cigar box juras instead of a guitar. Juras is very similar to buzuki, but slightly smaller. Finally, here you can see more DIY instruments made out of coconuts and turtle shells. These are modern approaches based on stories and pictures of instruments of the classic Rebetico era. According to these stories, Rebetes would build such instruments while being in prison. They would build instruments with anything they could find. I've heard similar stories about bluesmen, but I have neither found pictures nor supporting bibliography. I would be very grateful, of course, if anyone could recommend, any, could recommend any sources. In 2020, Spiros Dimitropoulos published a digital art uh, anthology with the title The History of Rebetico, in a page of which he shows how Rebetes would build DIY bouzoukis out of mandolins. You see, the bouzouki was banned for several decades because of its association with Rebetico music, while mandolin was associated with serenades and other Western European styles of music. So Rebetes would find a mandolin, cut the neck, and then apply a longer one. So to recap, these commonalities appear between instruments that were made by West, West African refugees who were enslaved and lived near the Mississippi Delta, and instruments that were made by Greek refugees who were forced to leave Asia Minor and move to Greece. 
Now, I was lucky to receive the cigar box Juraz as a birthday present, and while I was learning how to play it, I noticed more similarities between the older rebetico instruments and the bluesy instruments. Originally, all the instruments of the Buzuki family had three pairs of strings, typically tuned D, A, D. However, the maker of this decided to use three single strings, and he somehow set it up with an A, E, A tuning, which is a typical American cigar box guitar tuning. In any case, both tunings maintain the same intervallic rela relationship between the strings. I also realized that both Buzukis and cigar box guitars come in various sizes. In fact, the instruments of the Buzuki family have different names, such as Baglamas, Zuras, Misobuzuko, which literally translates as half Buzuki, and Gonato, which literally translates as Ni. Finally, musicians added more strings to both the buzukis and the cigar box guitars, so the modern players have abandoned the classic buzuki for the modern one that has four pairs of strings, typically tuned C, F, A, D. The rest of the instruments of the buzuki family remain unchanged and maintain the D, A, D tuning, and for that reason, all of them, except for the modern buzuki, are also called, called tri trihordo, which literally means three strings. Nevertheless, trihordo are mostly used by revivalists, purists, and tribute bands, whereas the modern buzuki eventually earned a position in Greek pop. Similarly, blues musicians abandoned the cigar box guitars to play electric guitars, which may come in different shapes, but there is one standard size for all. Now let's move, to the, let's move on to the final part of this presentation, which is my own experimentation and fusion of these styles with the use of instruments for, uh, from both traditions. This is the single Uncannily Alike of my DIY side project, Sake Con Queso. We write, play, record, produce, and mix the music, and we self-release while I have also created the silly artwork with the cheese. For this song, I have written the lyrics, and then I co-wrote the music with John Saketos. Uh, after recording the song, we left some space for two solos, after the first and the second chorus, respectively, we decided to do two colon responses. In the first one, the buzukiist calls and the guitarist responds. <laughs> Second, the Juras player calls and the guitarist once again responds. However, in this one we swapped positions so we both had the, the opportunity to throw musical ideas with the trichordo. As you can see, we mixed scales and techniques, so the result is somewhat peculiar. Now, this is an album of mine in which I experiment with different styles and instruments, especially my, my song Dear John contains parts that were performed with my oil can baglamas, my juras, my electric guitars, and the bouzouki of a professional player. 
In the introduction of the song, I used the glass slide on the oil can Baglamas to play something that resembles a blues turnaround. I do believe that this is a strange combination of distinctive elements of the two genres, but to my ears, it somehow works. In this audio sample, you can hear... You can hear the giraffe accompanying during this blueies verse. And the electric guitar combing during this rebetico with chorus. Finally, the bouzouki incorporates string bendings during its solo, something completely unknown to rebetico music. This is uh, Selectic Bibliography and Discography. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you very much, uh, Nassos, and thank you for uh, keeping to time. Uh, I love the music. Uh, you, you clearly absolutely shred so uh